What's going on? It's Keyshawn, and welcome to my show, Undisputed Presents All Facts, No Breaks podcast. Joining me today is UFC Hall of Famer, Grace Jiu-Jitsu practitioner, and one of the greatest fighters in the history of mixed martial arts, my boy, Hoist Gracie. What's up, Hoist, <laughs> Hoist, Hoist? What's happening? Long man, time. Life is good in my world. Yeah, well. No it's complaints. Been a, it's been a long, long, well, it's been, last time was the wedding. What was that, four years ago? About four years ago, yeah. About four years ago. But we go back way. No, we go way, way back, long time ago from the first time with James Strom. And, and I was telling my son who works with me, Keyshawn, that he was just a little puppy. But you would come to my home in Calabasas and take some time away from family and train to get ready for some fights and stuff. Yep. I'm assuming you're not fighting anymore. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm still in the same way, to, but no. No more fighting. No, no more fighting. No Hall of Fame, one last time, none of that. Nah, <laughs> not interested. <laughs> not interested? Okay. Well, on this business, you got to know when to stop. Okay. Right. Because that's when you get hurt, you see. You got to know when to stop. And how long has it been since you stopped fighting competitively? Ooh, my last song was about maybe five years ago. Hmm. I, was, I didn't even want to fight. My opponent keep pushing and pushing, calling me out. And this show is like, hey, come on, man. Come back, do one more. I was like, okay, fine. <laughs> Let's do it. Okay. <laughs> but nah, I'm not interested in fighting anymore. How, how, does, how does the body feel? Okay. The way I train, it's uh, if you watch me training... You'll be like, is that it? That's it? Where's the rest? It's like, you touch my face, I take that as a hit. So I never train like getting full on the hit. And a lot of people are finding out that now. Mm. You see, instead you spar full on and getting hit in the face. This whole thing of you got to get used to get hit. No, 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 no. You get used to get hit, I'm going to get used to hit you. We're made for each other. We're a perfect match. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I don't, I don't want to get used to get hit. <laughs> well, Hoist, it's an absolute honor to have you on the show. Um, you're a true legend who put Brazilian jiu-jitsu on the map. Here's what Joe Rogan had to say about your family. Take a listen. That Gracie shit's no joke, though. Mm. That family. They changed the world. The world. The mm. world didn't know. Jiu-Jitsu is the only martial art that did what was advertised. Right. And what was advertised was that a small, skillful person could beat a larger, stronger opponent who didn't know the techniques. Well, he proved it. He proved it. I'm a fucking... Boys Gracie proved it in the UFC. And he changed martial arts forever. And that, that family's probably the most consequential, the most important, significant family in the history of martial arts. The Gracie family changed martial arts worldwide so hoist how does it feel to look back and realize that you and your family had changed the game forever okay the way i look at it is it wasn't me it was the technique of jiu-jitsu mm -hmm. so that's what did it people say all the time well when i saw you fighting i was like man you didn't see me fighting you saw the technique it could have been anybody's face it's the technique that, that was impressive, that, that shocked people, that a, a smaller person. That was, okay, go back all the way to the beginning when my father started learning. Mm -hmm. He was like uh, my uncles. My father couldn't do it because he was very small. So he learned pretty much by watching. And then my uncle was late for a class one day. My father jumped in and taught the student a class. And the student liked it so much. By the time my uncle arrived, he told my uncle, the student told my uncle, from now on, I want to take classes with him. I don't want to take classes with him anymore. And that's when my uncles, my uncles were like, hold on, you never did this. What did you do? And on his mind, he was, uh, he was developing a way. He didn't invent anything new. He just developed a way for a smaller person can do it easier. He put leverage into the moves. Uh, my, my, now, okay, you, you say small. What was, what was the... the the biggest, I guess, you were as a fighter, the weight class or whatever. When I think I got 184, 185. So 184, 185, how tall? 6'1". Six 6'1". One. Six one. I fought a guy who was six No, 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 hold on, hold on. <laughs> how are you still here <laughs> being able to do this today with me? Seriously, because I saw Akibono. Akibono, yep. Okay, Akibono about six, Eight, six, yeah, eight. six, eight, about 
490 pounds. 490. I spent <laughs> yep. six months in Japan training the Japanese how to play football during my off season back in 98. Part of that was dealing with the sumo wrestlers as well. Man, motherfucker's so big. How, I don't understand how you <laughs> fought that. How did you fight him? And what did you... Like, when you That's walked insane. into the ring with him, how did, what did you think? Six foot eight, 490 pounds. His shoulder went from this hand to my shoulder. I measure him behind his back. Like, that. That's a one man's shoulder. I know, but how did it's, you survive it? Yeah, but that's crazy. <laughs> I, say, if he falls I, say my, you, I say my strength is right here. It's technique. <laughs> it's technique. No, te technique, yeah. my, technique my ass. It is. You have to technique. See, no, you have to see him, Keyshawn. <laughs> Aki, you, you saw, you was young. You was a kid when you went to Japan. Man, this dude is like a building. He's yeah. just huge, massive. But you can't tell me you walked into the ring. Well, you, I guess you could have the confidence. But of course. Okay, before the fight, we had a press conference in Hawaii. Okay. Okay. So I got up in the morning, like I do every morning, went for a run, came back, shorts, t shirt on my hand, sunglasses, shoes. I passed by the lobby and I saw Akibon and three other big Samoans sitting in the lobby because mm -hmm. we had to do a press conference that evening. So I, I know rules of engagement. I'm not supposed to talk to my opponent. Mm -hmm. That's how we look at it. So I walked by him and I was like, eh, Russo made me broken. So came back, look at him, stare at him. He's sitting down, stare at his. Uh, his two friends stare at them. I look at me, we look at them and I go, you know what? I think I'm too big for you for this fight, man. I got to lose some weight. And I'll walk outside to run some more. He has some more guy. He's like, what the F was that all about? <laughs> He's complaining. Like, gotta, I'm too big for you. I got to lose some weight, cut some weight for you, man. Make I, it I couldn't, if I saw somebody that big and I'm trying to fight, I'd just give up. I quit. Nothing I can do. Well, the dude is so massive. But that's the beauty of jiu-jitsu. Okay. I thought of, on this fight, my father said, bring him to the ground. Mm. So, and I did. I kind of pretty much fall mm. down, let him fall on top of me. Because I thought he would never be able to get up. As soon as I get back, I, I start to slide over. I go to his back. He gets up. And not just, he just, I was on the side. So, he shoved me off with the arm. I was off the ground. I bounced on the ropes and I was like, oh no, you did not do, just do this to me. You just did not swipe me off like a fly. <laughs> and now I'm mad. Now I'm mad. Again, I brought him to the ground, but he got up. I, was, I did not believe he, could, he was, uh, was going to be able to get up. But once, you, once he, you were able to get him on the ground, though. He was able just... to get up. And I was like, there's no way he was going to. Then he got up. I was like, wow, let's do it again. So second time he did not, he wasn't able to get up. So it was over with. That's a, that's when I got him an arm lock. Yeah. So you get him in the arm lock. Arm lock. Yep. It was, <laughs> and it was he had rap. to tap. So how do you <laughs> how do you feel right now about the uh, current state of Brazilian jiu jitsu in MMA? It's good. It's the spine for MMA. Hmm. If you take Brazilian jiu jitsu out, you see it goes back to different styles against different styles against karate, and that was the whole idea when my brother first created the UFC, uh -huh. was well, a lot of people thought the Graces are arrogant at trying to put down the other styles of martial art. No. My father, my uncles, my brothers, my cousins, they just had a curiosity. What works and what doesn't? Who would win a fight if you put a, the Mike Tyson against Bruce Lee? You see, we, we always had that curiosity. Mm. So take all the rules, take the weight division, take the time limit, let them fight and see what happens. So, and that's what, how we, the first UFC got created. It was curiosity. It was three fights in one night, so eight-man tournament. Mm -hmm. wow. the, sec, the second UFC was 16-man tournament, four fights in one night. Not like today, one fight, that's it. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> and there was no time limit, no way division. <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> So, Hoist, you grew up in Rio de Janeiro, um, kind of a, 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 I would say, a, a pretty rough place in Brazil. You were one of nine <laughs> kids, the youngest of seven brothers. What was life like growing up there? Man, Brazil is awesome. Yeah. I would not change it for nothing. I just went there for, with my daughter she, for the first time. She went there when she was two years old. She's like, Dad, I haven't been back since. Can you take me? I was like, sure. So we spent Christmas, New Year's. Yes, it is a dangerous place. 
it's a good place to visit. Let's say which part of Brazil? Rio, 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 Rio. I went. I went to Rio. I went to. Rio. I took her to Rio. No, and but which I, part is dangerous? The all Brazil. All Brazil. All Brazil. Yes, it's dangerous. It's a, yeah, it's it's really? pretty rough. Mm -hmm. Yes. I've never been. You never For took me. Hoist, though, I mean. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, yeah, with you, you, I feel good. Hey, yeah. I'm, go I'm, I'm going back. back. I'm going I'm back. In two, I'm going back in two weeks. But I'm good with you. Yeah, with you, we're good. Yeah, I'm good with you. I ain't even worried about it. Giddy. That's the first thing I say. Giddy. <laughs> Let me ask you this though. Now that I'm talking about that, because I always wanted to know, and I last time I saw you, I forgot to ask you. When you're out in public, right? In in whatever, you might be at a bar. You might be anywhere. Have you ever gotten into a confrontation with somebody and you say, look, man, I, I Come on now. just don't, just probably not a good idea to fuck with me. Have you ever gotten into that? Oh, what? we can curse here. Yes. Okay, good. Okay. Because yeah. I was trying to hold back. But no, no, no okay. But have you ever, but no, great points though. Have you okay. ever like, hold on. yeah. Yes. But people read on my forehead, don't fuck with me with blinking lights going around. They will look and I'll make an eye contact and they'll go, uh oh, yeah, let's not start something. Even before, even if they don't recognize, before the yeah, UFC. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Just the fact that my family have a, a I look that, you have that this look. A, that switch. Yeah, yeah, you look like my a cold killer. <laughs> <laughs> my do look. my daughter just told her roommates in college, somehow got in the arguments like, hey, if you guys you guys can talk bad about me, you guys can curse at me. But if you guys ever talk bad about my father, my brothers, fuck you up. They all like, okay, put their heads down. Like, <laughs> that's my daughter. It's like, <laughs> right, Keyshawn. I just want to know because you got to be a fool. Because I think about, I think about, like Mike Tyson, for instance, or or some boxers. People tried him in the public, but you're so unassuming, right? You're just a skinny guy, six feet, whatever. But in in people be like, oh, you're a regular dude. But if they judge the book by its cover, oh, yeah. until they get that technique. Yeah, until they get but, that but technique. Then, but then over. a lot of people don't recognize me because I don't yes. like I said, I don't call attention. Yeah. So I can go through the crowd easy. No problem. But you know, if they recognize that you bump into somebody, they're all drunk and they and I just feel bad for them. I'm like, Lord, have mercy. Oh, I had I had those arguments before and drunk people, and I'll come over, but I don't go out to, to nightclubs. But I, I got to a point that I, Come here and I'll whisper on the person's ear. Hey, like you don't want to do this. You're drunk and I'm not. <laughs> I'm going to fuck you up. Are you sure you want to go through with this? And they look, sat back, look at me like, uh, no, I'm good. Yeah. And he comes out, the tone of voice comes out in such a way. Yeah, no, like, <laughs> I know. I know. I watch you work out. Trust me. Speaking of that, so how many hours a day did you and your brothers train when you were working out, you think? Okay. I consider eating part of my training. Sleeping part of my training, so it's twenty four seven. Uh -huh. You see, I don't drink, don't smoke, don't party, don't care about going out nightclubs. So it's a twenty four seven. It goes beyond the mats. We say the teaching. I got a silver as example. So yes, I'm constantly working out. Uh, Sleeping is part of my workout. Yeah, just rest. <laughs> you gotta rest. You, you gotta recover. Sleep. Yeah, you gotta recover. You gotta eat good. So. It's a constant workout. <laughs> mm. What? So if you was fighting today, though, where where do you think today in UFC, where would you be at today? I was made to be on the top, man. <laughs> I was made to be number one. <laughs> so you, there's no question, you still be number one. Yep. Is no there doubt. anybody? Is there anybody <laughs> in the in that arena right now that you look at and you say, "I wish I could fight him"? There's only one way to find out. Is fight him. But you're older. <laughs> get back but you're in there, older get back now. In. No, no, we don't want him to get back in. So you're I don't want to go now. back in. But there's only one way to find out if I would have succeed pick, picking up Hoyce from 10, 20 years ago with the top champion today. It's a different game. Yeah, you right. see, it's a different game. But then again, today they have fight with time limit. Back then, there was no time limit, no weight divisions. What's the longest so, fight that you ever had? I fought Sakuraba, man, for an hour and 45 minutes. It was six rounds of 15 minutes with unlimited... What's, what's the name? Sakuraba. Jap sounds Japanese. Japanese, Japanese, Japanese guy, oh yes. Oh, my God. The it main was, events now it was only six. It, it was six rounds of 15 minutes. Unlimited rounds until somebody quit. And who won? He won that one. He broke my foot with a kick. Oh. It was a partial tear on the ligament, a crack on the shin. So I sat down. I told my father and my brother in the corner, I can get up, but I can't walk. You tell me what to do. 
if they say, go ahead and get up, I'll do it. Yeah, but you're I'm crazy, though. But you're but, crazy. No soldier, that, you're crazy. Not, 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 I can't, I can't, Man, I can't do that. I play football for a living. I'm not doing it. If, I, if, if they say get up, I'll get up. But they said, let's not confuse toughness with stupidity. Yes. You already right. proved that you're tough by showing up and doing what you do. Continue. If you can't walk, you're standing target. So that would be stupidity. So right. they threw that out. But we had a rematch after, and I beat him in 15 minutes. What's the worst? So, injury that you either had or you caused for somebody? Oh, man, I got my heart broken once. My God, it took forever to recover. No. <laughs> oh, well, not that. <laughs> not that. I, I think we all been there once or twice. <laughs> um, partial tear on the tendon and, and a crack on the shin from that fight. Mm. Oh, that was wow. probably the worst one. It was like six rounds of 15 minutes, man. It's an hour and 45 the crowd fell asleep, woke up. It's the most boring fight ever. The crowd fell asleep, woke up, and we're still in the cage fight, in the ring fighting. <laughs> Man, that, that, you know, I've only been to, and I, I feel like you were, I feel like you were with me at the Coliseum yes. to, to watch Johnny Martin fight. Yep, that's I, the, I fought of that one. That was the only, yes. yeah, that's right. That's that when I, the, I beat uh, Sakuraba, I beat the city the guy. Only, that was the only fight that I ever yep. had gone with to. With Johnny Martin, yes. When Johnny Martin got knocked out in like 30 seconds. Yep. It was like, I'm like, why? Play football for a living. This isn't for hey, me. He tried to test himself. <laughs> yeah, he tested himself too far, and he's on the internet now. So. Well, you, you spoke about your father uh, earlier. Just wondering, what was one of the greatest lessons you think that he taught you? He's stubborn and patient. So. Sounds like the guy to the left of you. To the right <laughs> stubborn and patient. <laughs> And that's what the Gracie family is very much like that. Yeah. Follow the footsteps. You tell us what's impossible, man. We're going to prove you wrong. Yeah. We're going to do it. <laughs> yeah, I try to tell him. He thinks I'm stubborn and impatient, uh, very patient. I'm very patient. But he thinks I'm stubborn because I just want to let his ass get away with anything <laughs> and do anything and hold him accountable. So he always <laughs> thinks that I'm being too hard on him. But no doubt. I'm just messing. <laughs> Pretend that he's not here. Let's talk yeah, about him. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Okay, so Hoist, uh, we saw <laughs> clips from your early UFC fights where you fought without gloves on. Um, how has the UFC changed in your eyes, and what time period would you consider the golden era of the UFC? Okay, the UFC was proving grounds. So there was no gloves, no time limit, no weight division. So that was the first ones. And then today, Okay, before was a fighter against a fighter. Man, what happened to the hair? It was a style against a style. That's what happened when you get old, man. <laughs> <laughs> You're looking good. You're looking good. But it's a, before it was a style against a style. It was a fighter against a fighter. Today, it's more of a... Um, it became a show for the TV. Before it was, it was a fight. Today, it became a show, the entertainment. They have to put rounds to to make the show continue. Because without time limit, you can't put on TV, on pay-per-view. So they had to do a time limit. I understand, you see, uh, all the fighters now, before, like I said, it was a style against a style. Today, all the fighters are learning everything. So you see karate guys choking people out. You see uh, wrestlers knocking people out. You see jiu guys knocking People out kick with the head and the with the kick on the head. Mm -hmm. So they, it became a mixed martial art. They all learning everything. So one style is not enough anymore. So I'll see all a lot of the grapplers are doing stand up. A lot of the stand up fighters are doing grappling. So when you when you look at today's sports and other arenas, major sports, is there an athlete, a LeBron or Bo Jackson that played, or some of these other athletes that's around that you think could make a good MMA fighter? If you don't know what you're doing, you're gonna be Johnny Martin. You're gonna Okay, I, I didn't say it. <laughs> I said it. You're gonna be Johnny Martin. You're gonna hit the deck in like 30 seconds. <laughs> but yes, it's uh if you don't know how to swim, you have no business jumping in a pool. And that's why I don't get in the pool because I can't swim. So, yep. So you can be the best track and field runner in the world. You can run all day long. You can get jump in the pool, you're gonna drown. Get the best swimmer all day long. Swim all day long. Best swimmer in the world. Put him on the track. He can't run. Yeah. It's a different sport. So it's a, 
you he got to train. Anybody can be good. You just got to train. Is the is it is it uh, a lot of it though? Is it like stamina? You got to have strong stamina to be able to withstand an hour and a half type fight. You got to be able to be equipped for that. You have to have. Uh, you have to know what you're doing. Okay. Because if I don't know how to play football, I have no business on the field. Everybody run left, I run right. It's like, wait, 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 what? Guys, hold on, come back here. What's going on? So I have, I don't know how to play the game. I don't know how to throw the ball. So I, I have no business on the field. Mm -hmm. Once I learn how to play football, I have to have endurance. Because I cannot play for 30 seconds and say, coach, I'm done for the day. Mm -hmm. So you got to have endurance. The third one becomes power. And you got to be in that order. You can have the fastest car in the world without gas. What are you going to do? Push that car around town? You have to put gas on it. Mm. Then the horsepower. So you got to be in that order. You got to know what you're doing. You got to go. Sometimes it's not the biggest, the fastest, but he knows the game. He has the vision for the game. You got to have endurance to be able to play the game all day long. And you have then becomes power. Mm -hmm. So it, to me, it's in that order. So, Hoist, on this show, we have a popular segment called Facts or Fiction. And rumor has it that you and Mike Tyson were considering an MMA fight. <laughs> is this true? Is this facts or is this fiction? That's true. We, we actually invite Mike Tyson to fight. He accepted to fight in the UFC. But then everybody around him said, don't, don't do it. He can't, he would have ruined boxing at the time. So, yes, but we had a challenge to bring him in to fight in the UFC. You were gonna fight him? Oh yeah. Yeah, we found like a <laughs> we found like a game simulation of you guys yep. fighting. Uh you actually won the fight in a TKO. I don't know if there's the video, but, but he, so he would have had to he would have had to <clears throat> learn mixed martial arts to some degree, right? It was gonna be the rules of the It would be it would be MMA, yes. It would oh, be like yeah. me learning boxing today to fight him boxing. They just I don't stand a chance. Yeah, he wouldn't have stood a chance. I don't you care. See, it's so punching. Yeah. He, he, I mean, he accepted. He's a tough guy. He's a fighter. He's yeah, like, but, man, I would love to have him. But if you sweep the feet, not in that octagon. If you, if, if you, I'll if take you, him down, if yes. You, <laughs> if you know the whole, if you sweep the feet, it's over. Yep. And Once take he him falls down. on the ground, it's over. I'm not punch proof. If he hits my shoulder, the fight will be over too. Yeah, but you can get so, out of the way <laughs> fast enough and you know how to sweep yeah. the feet. Again, there's only one way to find out. Is get in the ring and do it. So right. people would never find out who would have won that fight. Well, like I said, <laughs> we, we got a simulation and it said you got the TKO. So I mean I in, don't in think I don't game. I don't think I don't think I would have TKO Tyson. There's no way. <laughs> Unless you'd have just hit him the right, right way. <laughs> nah, I would have been a submission with him. Not yeah, well, see, the that, TKO would be a submission. Joke, but that's over with. There's nothing he can do. <laughs> because he doesn't know, yes. Yeah, yeah the TKO saying. was a submission. Yes, okay. Like you got him right there. You choking him yeah. out. He's losing. He's tapping uh, out. Yeah. Like, tap, tap, tap. <laughs> That's like what yeah. you did to me in the gym that day when you were showing me. That you wasn't say, me. I would never do such a thing to you. Tap you when I start feeling a little woozy. <laughs> no, he had me, Keyshawn. He had me. Now, mind you, I was you know I was big, strong, the whole deal. He had me around my neck, and he said, "Just tap him if I start feeling like I'm getting ready to faint." <laughs> he had me. He was just, it was like that. that I was done. Technique. That, yeah, was was me. that wasn't me. <laughs> that, that wasn't me. Okay. <laughs> I would never do such a thing. <laughs> no, that's a, that's a damn lie. <laughs> so um, actor and martial artist Michael G. White stated that he believes Jackie Chan would, would, would defeat Bruce Lee in a head-to-head -head matchup. Check this out. Uh, An actual fight mm -hmm. between Bruce Lee and Jackie Chan. Uh, uh, an actual fight? What what I would think? Yeah, who would win that fight? I think Jackie, Jackie Chan would Chan, win. Jackie Chan, I mean, is is not a professional fighter, but he is a. I would have. I would. I would. I would. If I was a betting man, I'd yes. say Jackie Chan. Jackie Chan was bigger. Okay, just because of his it, physical it, size. I've never. Have you met Jackie Chan before? Briefly, yeah. Jackie how, Chan. How tall is he? He he's not a small guy. Huh. He's, okay. He, I would say Jackie Chan's about five eight. Five, five nine. Five nine. Yeah, it was five eight, five nine, and he's 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 durable. That's a that's a tough dude. So Hoist, <laughs> as one of the greatest fighters to ever live, what do you think about this? You got who do you got? Again, I can't bat on anybody. There's only one way to find out. That's yeah. in the ring. That's in the ring. Yes. But it just seemed, I don't know. It <laughs> seemed like maybe my maybe 
my um, brains is telling me Bruce Lee because I grew up Bruce Lee movies and I'm watching <laughs> him and he's so ripped up and the whole. So I'm thinking, oh, Bruce Lee kick his ass. That's what I'm. <laughs> it just feels that way because Bruce Lee beat everybody in the movies. Yeah. So I would just think Jackie Chan did too. They did. But see, I don't watch Jackie Chan movies. <laughs> Rush Hour. Yeah, that's yeah. a different. That's, <laughs> yeah, that ain't quite the same as Bruce Lee. And, what was it? The Charlie into, into Temple, the or whatever. Yeah, into, into the Dragon. The dragon. Into it's the just dragon. a. <laughs> and then I watch Bruce Lee whoop up on Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. So, <laughs> you know, it's a little different. But you're right. Only way to find out is get uh, in the ring. There's only one way to find out. Yes. Yeah. So back in 2020, UFC president Dana White revealed his Mount Rushmore of MMA fighters. Take a look. If you're talking about a Mount Rushmore, you know, where their heads are carved in stone forever. Yes. Um, you, you have to go hoist Gracie. No brainer. You have to do that. Um, Amanda Nunes. Has to be a man who is the greatest female fighter ever. Um, the other two are tough. I would have to go with a John Jones. I would have to go with a John Jones. Um, the guy's never been beat. And what's more amazing about him going undefeated, which is incredibly amazing, because very few people do it in this sport, is the things that he's done to himself outside of the octagon, and he still hasn't been beat. Um, and then number four on the Mount Rushmore. Uh, I guess you'd have to go with Chuck Liddell. One. <laughs> I think it's cool. It's a tough I think one. it's cool that you were the first one immediately, <laughs> no questions asked. But what do you think of his list? And who is your Mount Rushmore of MMA legends? Man, that's a tough one. There's so many good fighters out there. It's a it would be a tough one to pick. It's a yeah. Well, I would I'm say gonna... I agree with John Jones, but then there's Saint Pierre, there's Khabib out Khabib, there. You yeah. see, it's like there's so many good fighters, man. So it's hard to pick. And you probably could just Amanda pick Nunes, many people. I agree with that. You probably could pick many people from your family. Yes. <laughs> Hans is awesome. So, yeah. But you, a, but you like his my list. Fa his my list father should be there. My father is the one that he's 140 pounds. But he didn't in, fight in the U.S. Everything was... No, everything was in Brazil. Everything was Brazil. But he fought a fight that was three hours and 45, or three hours and 40 minutes. One round straight through. Huh? Sit over here for three hours and 40 minutes, man. Your buns will hurt. Before <laughs> My father was fighting straight, one round, straight through. Three hours and 40 minutes. <clears throat> y'all are crazy. Different. <laughs> yeah, but y'all... Fought I, a guy that was double of his weight. Ain't. <laughs> so we have some fan <laughs> questions before we wrap this up. Um, Stephanie from Boston <laughs> asks, what's the hardest thing you've ever done physically or mentally? Mentally, eh, it's a, it goes with the physical, I think. So, I think it's hanging out with James Strong, man. <laughs> hanging Shout out with out James, James, man. He, man, yeah, he's, a, he's, he's a machine. I, I strength coach. We went for a run one time. A machine. He went for a run. He runs a lot. He's a machine. He's a yeah. 200 pounds. Yeah. Built like a football player. Built like runs a brick. Like a, like a track and field marathons. Ultra marathons. Went yeah. for a run one time. It was uh, uh, 41 miles. Yes. We did. And Trust me, I did hours, it. Seven hours later, <laughs> it's like, James, I got cramps on both calf. I can't, I can't take another step. Call the car. He's like, okay. He's like. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and climbing um, cactus to, uh, to clouds. Yeah. In Palm Springs. Uh, Palm Springs. He took us to that. And there's like stuff that was like. Preparations, like not much. It's like, hey, next week we're gonna go. Okay, yeah. fine, let's do it. He'll call me, like, let's do it. It's like, we climbed that thing, man. That was miserable. No, I, I got just... to, I got to be the number one pick in the draft because of working with James. The, you know, the training, the the mm. grueling, like the just running, and it's like crazy. Like, where, where are we going? Oh, we're gonna go on a twenty mile run. Yeah, yeah. Brand, fucking out random of your mind right now. Marathon. Yeah, random. <laughs> like, she out of nowhere, just at six o'clock in the morning, we're gonna go for a run. Okay, yeah. around the corner. No, we're gonna run 
20 from miles. Seal Beach to Laguna Beach yeah, and back. Yeah, we're going like, to run what? from Seal Beach to Laguna Beach and back. I remember James called me one time. He said, I'm driving to Palm Springs and I'm going to run to Arizona. Yep. And then, I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? He literally would do that and run. I just don't understand it. We, do, we just did a hike a couple summers ago, a few summers ago, yeah, two, three summers ago. We did a hike from Malibu Back to Redondo Beach. And it's not... On the hottest day of the summer. <laughs> and James is not 24 years old. He's yeah. a 60 year old 60, man. Yeah, looks like he's 35. Still. <laughs> and he's still running like 40 miles and 50 miles, like some crazy shit. Like I just, yeah. Yeah, he, it, it, he trained me. I, he trained me like a, just like, I don't know, a possessed. And the, and the worst deal. part is when he calls us, we, we can't say no. Yeah. Hey, we're going to go for, I'm going to go for a run. I already know it's going to be, it's like, okay. Okay, James. He's like, to wait to see if he's going to go alone or if it's an if it's invitation. Um, what time do I meet you? It's like, oh, God damn, I have to go with him. <laughs> I can't say no. It's like, yeah. <laughs> no, no, I'm just telling you I'm going to go. Oh, having, okay, okay, James. I used to Good have to know. <laughs> from, he used to drive down from Orange <laughs> County to my house in Calabasas when I was playing football and he would train me and we'd do all the running and whatever in the hills or whatever we need to do. I was hoping he would be exhausted <laughs> by the time he got to my house so we didn't have to work so hard, but it didn't work, but it helped me out a long way. So yeah. shout out to James. Shout out James, <laughs> man. He's the guy. So Chris from Los Angeles asked, what do you think is the most misunderstood thing about you or the work that you do? The most misunderstanding that people on the beginning thought they were trying to put down the other styles of martial art. So they're like, well, the graces are trying to put down karate by challenging the karate guys or wrestling or kung fu or whatever. A lot of people talk wrong, but we're in a quest to find out which style works and what works and what doesn't. What's the difference between karate and, I, I'm oblivious to it, it's right. I don't, I'm, I don't know, but what's the difference between Karate and jiu-jitsu seem like the same thing to me. Karate is more stand-up. A lot of punches, kicks. They don't know any grappling. Okay. So we know more grappling. Okay. So we believe we don't do much punch and kicking, but we believe if we get in a clinch, for instance, Mike Tyson, if you're fighting Mike, some, whoever's fighting Mike Tyson, if they start to lose, what do they do? They get in a clinch. Mm -hmm. The referee comes over, break them apart, and the guy's getting beat up again, he shoots in, getting a clinch. So it's not impossible to get in a clinch. You see, and if we take them down, if it's a, the rules are allowed, if it's not a boxing match, for the MMA match, I can take him down. Once I take him down, he doesn't know anything on the ground. And now it's like, uh, you don't know how to swim. No. I'll get a hold of you and I'll jump in a pool. I'm not gonna jump in with you. No, you're not going to, but I'm gonna jump. I'm gonna grab you and I'm gonna tackle you. I'm gonna... That's my goal to take you to the pool because I know how to swim. So when we take them to the ground, we, it's a swimming pool. Oh. We know how to be there and they don't. So in that, the karate guys don't know. You see, they have to learn jiu jitsu. So are you a dangerous <clears throat> fighter if you have jiu jitsu, karate, and boxing? Are you I, would say, I would say jiu jitsu for the submissions, for the ground grappling. Um, for takedowns, a lot of people like wrestling, a lot of people like judo, it becomes a preference. For the striking, there is great fighters that come from karate background, there's great boxers, kickboxers, it becomes a preference, which one, kickboxing, kicks and punch, boxing would be just hands, karate would be hands and kicks, taekwondo would be a much more, a lot of more, kicks instead so much hands. So every style have their little specialty. Okay, and last question before we wrap up. Lucas from Philadelphia asks, how does someone become a Hoist Gracie black belt? Uh, you gotta train jiu-jitsu for a long time. A minimum 10 to 12 years before you qualify to become a black belt. So, yeah, and then it's not just yeah. I train for that long. We take under consideration, like I said in the beginning, we go beyond the mat. Yeah. If you're an alcoholic, sorry, you won't be on my black belt. <clears throat> if you're a, a 
child molester, sorry, it goes beyond the, the math. You see, you got to serve as example out there. So if you're a black belt, though, mm. you're really good, though. You're good. And I, and you serve as example. You got to, you see, you're not... I won't be ever a, be, I guess I won't ever be a black belt. <laughs> that's for damn sure. Because I'm not getting in the ring to begin with. It's well, just, it just, but it's, you don't have to fight. It's about knowledge. I got to fight. I got to show you my techniques. You got to gotta show the, the technique, yes. And I'm going to have to fight the, somebody, But right? if you know the technique, you'll be a good fighter. You got to know the technique. It's if you late. don't know the technique, then it'll be a problem. But if you know the technique, you'll be like, ah, eh, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I, I, for some reason, it's just, it's too scary for me. When I, I watch it on I TV. I think I can get you ready for the next UFC. No, no, you can't. <laughs> I've watched NFL, I watched ex-NFL players get in the ring, and every last one of them get their ass kicked. They don't know what they're doing. Every last one, they might win a fight <clears throat> or two against a tomato can, but for the most part, they all get beat up. Well, they got the athlete yeah. in them, so they want to try out. No. They want to try getting, out. I'm not if getting you in the ring. I'm trying to my convince head. him to get in the ring. No, I'm not getting hit in my head, my face. Look how pretty this Hold is. Hold on. Did, did I say I get hit? What, what did I say? I don't like to get hit. But you. I'm going to train you how to hit people, not how to get hit. Yeah, but you're at a different level. You're the <laughs> best that ever to do it, ever, ever in life, the best to do it. You know, Hall of Fame. But for me to get in the ring and fuck my face up, I'm not doing that. I watch. I watch uh, Johnny Martin. That's all I needed to see. That's say. all I needed to see. I watched him at the Coliseum. He got it. He walked in. He ran around the ring. He did his little deal. He took they ding, ding, boom, boom, boom. He hit the mat. I looked at James. I said, I think they just killed him. <laughs> I think they literally just killed Johnny Martin because he was laid out flat, couldn't move. They had to bring the stretcher. It was crazy. I was like, oh, God. Are you sure you don't want to try that out? Nope. I'm good. I like doing what I do for a living. Hoist, one last question just for me. Yes. Who do you think the best MMA UFC fighter is today out of all the weight classes? Oof. I like, I'm not going to, I cannot say one only. Give I'm going to say, I'm, I'm going to say the champions. Just all the there's champions. A, yeah. There's a reason why they're the champions. Uh-huh. You see, so today they're the champions for that reason. So they train, they dedicate the time, family, they isolate themselves and they, it's, it's a lot that goes on. It's not just showing up and fighting, being a tough guy. You cannot be a tough guy and get in there and win. What's the one dude that's always getting into trouble though? The little dude that walks funny with the red oh, hair? Uh, his name? Conor McGregor. Conor McGregor? Yes. Is he really good? Yeah, I don't, he's good. Yeah, he's really, really he's good. good. Is he still fighting? He's still fighting. He's too active. I yes. think he's going to fight this year, I think they announced. But he hasn't fought in, a, in like a couple years. Small weight class because he's small, right? Yes. He's, he's a, a light, smaller guy. lightweight division, yes. You can take him. No, I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, I'm he's good. bad. He's bad, man. He's bad. No, he, he, he looks bad. He's, he's all like, Rah. He's bad. No, he's good. <laughs> no, no. He looks like a, a badass fighter. I mean, yes. <laughs> I've watched a couple of his fights and stuff, but I'm not... I'm good. How you doing, <laughs> sir? That's about all I need to say to it. I don't want to cause no problems. I'm here. I'm a fan. That's it. I don't want to make him uncomfortable. I don't need to trigger him. Nothing. <laughs> Wait, do you think that affects um, the fighting, like not being it, like not fighting for a year or two and then coming back, or do you think people, the fighters, just have it in them? Because it's it's when you stop playing football or basketball for a couple years, it's it's completely different. Depends. Depend on. If you stop and you're not training at all, zero training, yeah, then yes, it's a fact. But if you're constantly training, you're constantly shooting hoops or yeah. throwing the ball, yeah. right. you, and you're going to practice and you're still in shape and running and, and you're still in the same weight and you still keep up with the work, yes, it's a, it doesn't affect. But if you're totally stop, give a break for a couple of years, a year, even a year, it's a lot mm. yeah. to catch up, to come back, train for three months and still perform that good. It's going to be tough. Man, I, I appreciate you stopping in with me, Hoist. It, it means a lot. It means <laughs> a lot to me so and my much. son to be able to sit down and talk a little mixed martial arts, jiu-jitsu, taekwondo, karate, wrestling, boxing, whatever it is. We enjoyed <laughs> the conversation. Appreciate it. Thank you. That's a Thank wrap. Thank you.
That's a wrap for today. Thanks again to the legend himself, Hoist Gracie, for joining the show. Don't forget to subscribe and follow All Facts Pod on social media. Until then, peace.